namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namaste. So Nibbana is non-dual. It's basically the equivalent of Brahman in the Vedic teaching. So just like Brahman, Nibbana is non-conceptual. It's beyond our ideas, beyond our mind, beyond thought and words. And that is because language is always dualistic. As soon as we say one thing, we imply the opposite. For example, the Buddha spoke three things about the world. Uh, that it's impermanent, anicca. It's unsatisfactory, dukkha, and it's not self, anatta. So the world is anicca dukkha anatta. This implies that there must be something that is the opposite, that instead of being impermanent, it's permanent. Instead of being unsatisfactory, it's satisfactory. And instead of being not self, it's self. So this is the duality that confuses people when they try to understand Nibbana or Brahman. If the world is impermanent, unsatisfactory, and not self, then Brahman or Nibbana must be permanent, satisfactory, and self. But no, this is not it. <laughs> Can't be. Because these are a dilemma of opposing logical characteristics. Western logic is dualistic, binary. Either right or wrong, good or bad, on or off, <laughs> self or not self. And Nibbana is something completely different. It's non-dual. That's why Nibbana can't be described in words. Because if it were possible to describe or understand Nibbana simply by negation of material qualities, then it would be easy. huh? But it's not so easy. It can only be experienced. It can't really be described. When the Buddha attained enlightenment, after contemplating it for some time, he said, there are two things that really are hard to understand. Buddha sang idang tanang yadidang Idapachayata paticha mupado. Hard to see is this point, namely dependent arising, which is a relatedness of this to that. Idampi kotanam duddasam yadidang sabasankara samato sabhu padi patinisago tanhakayo virago nirodo. Nibbana. And this point, too, is difficult to see, namely the stilling of all fabrications, the relinquishment of all assets, the destruction of craving, detachment, cessation, Nibbana. So Nibbana and Paticca Samuppada, the process of becoming, these are at the heart of the Buddha's teaching. 
And yet, if you talk to any contemporary Buddhist, <laughs> you'll find they don't have a very good understanding of these. That's because they keep trying to use mundane dualistic logic to explain and understand that which is non-dual, the middle path. See, the middle path is the way between the extremes of dualistic logic. That is, Nibbana neither exists nor does not exist. It's neither temporary nor permanent. It's neither material nor spiritual. It's neither this nor that. Uh, you take any set of dichotomies and they can't explain Nibbana. So how can we explain it? Through Paticca Samupada, dependent arising. So this shows that things that arise in the world come out of nothing and they go back into nothing. For example, fire. A fire happens when there are the requisite conditions for its existence, the causes, like sufficient fuel and oxygen and a spark to get it started. Then the fire will burn merrily until the conditions change. Either it runs out of fuel or it runs out of air or somebody dumps some water on it or whatever. And then the fire, we say, goes out. Well, where does it go? It simply ceases to exist. It comes out of nothing by the combination of certain causes. And when those causes are disrupted, it disappears. That's it. The same is true of the body, the mind, the senses, the world, forms, names, experiences, time, space, <laughs> matter, you name it. Anything that is perceptible comes out of nothing and it goes back to nothing when it's finished. This being, that comes to be. With the arising of this, that arises. This not being, that does not come to be. With the cessation of this, that ceases. And that is to say, dependent on ignorance, fabrications come to be. Dependent on fabrications, consciousness. Dependent on consciousness, name and form. Dependent on name and form, the six sense bases. Dependent on the six sense bases, contact. Dependent on contact, feeling. Dependent on feeling, craving. Dependent on craving, grasping. Dependent on grasping, becoming. Dependent on becoming, birth. Dependent on birth, decay and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair come to be. Thus, is the arising of this entire mass of suffering. But with the complete fading away and cessation of ignorance comes the cessation of fabrications. With the cessation of fabrications, the cessation of consciousness. With the cessation of consciousness, the cessation of name and form. With the cessation of name and form, the cessation of the six sense bases. With the cessation of the six sense bases, the cessation of contact. With the cessation of contact, the cessation of feeling. With the cessation of feeling, the cessation of craving. With the cessation of craving, the cessation of grasping. With the cessation of grasping, the cessation of becoming. With the cessation of becoming, the cessation of birth. With the cessation of birth, the cessation of decay and death, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair cease to be. 
Thus is the cessation of this entire mass of suffering. So this resembles a mathematical calculation. But it's not mathematical. In this case, it's the process of becoming. And it's not only the process of becoming, it's the process of cessation as well. Because of this, that arises. The existence of this causes the arising of that. But when this goes away, that also disappears. The cessation of this causes the cessation of that. And this are causes and that are effects. So this is the middle path. This is the middle way. It's not that the middle path means some kind of compromise between strict and loose morality, the way it's portrayed in many Western Buddhist sources. That's completely wrong. The Buddha himself says, I attained Nibbana by the middle path. How is this? Because the middle path is the process of becoming, creating causes such that the conditions that we desire come into being. That's very powerful. That's really the way that we can attain anything that we want in this universe or out of it. <laughs> the point is, we want to stop the process of becoming so that we're no longer entangled in the dichotomies of cause and effect of this and that, of arising and cessation. We want to make it all cease permanently. And how do we do that? Well, as we cease to create the causes of becoming in the world, we also develop the qualities that lead to Nibbana. So we can show this, it's easier with an illustration, animation. Here we go. So the point here is that suffering and decay and death are dependently arisen. What is decay and death dependent on? Birth. What is birth dependent on? Becoming. What is becoming dependent on? Clinging. And so on, back, back, back to the original cause of ignorance. Once we eliminate ignorance, the whole chain of cause and effect collapses and we are free. That's why the path always begins with instruction. That's why we make so many videos to help people understand these subtle truths. So I hope you will take this teaching to heart. In the video description, we have given several links to previous videos on the same topic, which discuss it in much more detail than we can go into here. So please take a look at them and perfect your understanding of Paticca Samuppada. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.